In this video, we'll show you how to replace a dishwasher step by step. When we're looking at kitchen appliances, one appliance that we can't overlook is a dishwasher. Dishwasher is one of those things that is critical for a modern kitchen and it saves a ton of time and energy and effort in the home. Now, one thing that we tend to focus on when we go and purchase a dishwasher is all the bells and whistles and what does it look like. But we also have to keep in mind what the requirements are to actually install the dishwasher. Usually that doesn't hit until after you leave the store and you get the dishwasher in your home. So while this might feel like it's an intimidating process, it shouldn't be. All we have to do is pay attention to how the old dishwasher is hooked up and then follow all the instructions that come with the new dishwasher. So in this video, we're gonna take you through the steps that you need to go through to get the old dishwasher removed and install the new one. If you're interested in any of the tools that we're using to go through this installation, uh, or if you're interested in the dishwasher that we've chosen to install, we'll have links in the description below where you can go and check those things out. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started and get this dishwasher out of here. Before you start removing the old dishwasher, you want to make sure you have a couple things in line. First is making sure that there's no water that's going to be on when you remove the dishwasher. That would be a huge mess that you don't want to deal with. The second thing is you want to make sure that there's no electricity uh, currently powering the dishwasher as you're trying to remove it. So in some cases, that's really easy to do and to take care of. And in other cases, it's a little bit more complicated. So in our case, let me show you what I've got here. Okay, so in our case, like I said, all we have to do here is uh, shut off the water supply valve. So we're going to do that now. Quarter turn valve, so that's all it takes. And then over here, we're going to unplug the dishwasher. Make sure if you've got a couple things plugged in under the sink that you're actually unplugging the dishwasher and uh, not the garbage disposal. That's usually the other thing that's plugged in underneath here. The other thing you need to do is make sure the drain hose is also unattached from the dishwasher. And so we just need to unscrew this clamp, slide this um, plastic drain hose off of here. And it's also a good idea to have either a rag or a bucket uh, underneath this connector because water is probably going to come out right now. There it goes. I need a bucket. Now that the dishwasher drain has been undone, the dishwasher has been unplugged and the water has been turned off, the last thing we need to do is undo the water supply line. So in this case, all we have to do is loosen this nut here on this side of the water supply line and uh, then we are free to remove the dishwasher. Make sure you have a rag or something underneath this connection as well because water will most likely come out of here. Now we get to try and feed all those things through this little bitty hole as best as we can. Um, actually, usually there's just going to be a couple things that you need to push through here. Um, they should have a separate hole for the drain, as you can see up here. Uh, the drain hose is right here, so we can feed this up through another uh, slot that's built in up here. So in order to get this, these two things out of this one hole here, what we're going to do is we're going to push this water hose back in first. And we might have some water to clean up later, but that's okay. And then we're going to take this electrical cord and uh, shove this back in here as well. Get that all nice and out of the way. And then we'll take this drain hose up top and uh, get this fed in too as, much, as best as we can. So that way we don't have a lot to, uh, to mess with as we're pulling out the dishwasher. If your dishwasher has a tow kick, it's also a good idea to remove that as well. If you can, it's usually secured by a couple of bolts and that'll give you some additional clearance and some room uh, when you're removing a dishwasher. Okay, so the next step is to unscrew the dishwasher from its area. So what we need to do is open the dishwasher door and in our case, we've got some tabs that are used to hold the dishwasher in and screwed into the counter. Um, in some cases, you'll also have some tabs on the side that could be used to hold the dishwasher in place. So what we just need to do at this point is unscrew any, any visible screws here uh, to be able to slide this dishwasher out. So in our case, we just have these couple at the top, so we're going to do that now. So here's 
screw over here and we just need to unscrew it. Again, this is the top of the dishwasher in our case. You can see a couple blocks of wood up here that were glued to this granite countertop to allow uh, some area for the screws to be screwed in. So that's all there is to getting the dishwasher out. Now what we're gonna do is transition and get the new dishwasher prepared to go into this space. First step is to make sure the springs are tensioned properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the door and make sure that at within 20 degrees, the dishwasher closes appropriately. And it looks like it does, the dishwasher door closes. And it stays open if it's beyond that. So it looks like it's good. Um, if you need to make an adjustment, they said that uh, this dishwasher and probably other dishwashers if you want a custom door panel on the dishwasher, basically to make it look like another part of your cabinets, then you would need to adjust the springs. It looks like it's probably adjusted, adjusted just fine from the factory. Um, but if you do need to make an adjustment, you wanna move the spring on this side on this specific dishwasher um, to either one of these holes on the sides here or just leave it where it is. And uh, also on this dishwasher, there's another spring just like this on the other side. So again, it's gonna depend on the model of your dishwasher, but on this one, that's where the door adjustment springs are. Next, we need to remove the toe kick. While typically the dishwasher is going to include a drain hose like this one here, uh, they don't always include all the other pieces you need to make the install. Uh, you need to make sure that if your dishwasher, for example, will plug into an outlet, that you have the power cord. You also need to make sure that you have a water supply line and also usually a 90 degree elbow to make the turn on the connection from within the dishwasher. Now, you can either purchase all these components separately from your hardware store or online, or sometimes you can find a kit, like we found here, that includes everything you need. So, with the exception of the drain hose, this has the uh, power cord, this has the 90 degree elbow, and it has a nice steel uh, stainless steel braided uh, water supply line that we can use to hook up the dishwasher so we're going to start installing this now and uh, we'll also leave a link in the description to a kit similar to this if this is your situation you need one of these two we have the dishwasher laying on its back so first thing we want to do is install this water supply line now the one that comes in this kit uh, has the 90 degree elbow built in to the hose so we don't have to do a separate connection here. Uh, some of them you'll, you might have to buy the uh, 90 degree elbow separately, and if you did, then you'd have to hook up this hose to this elbow as well. But since this is all integrated, we just have to attach this to the bottom of the dishwasher. Make sure this is going on straight. We don't want to strip this. Take your time. Don't want to strip this connection. And just to be clear, in our instructions for this kit, it says to tighten this uh, half turn with a wrench. Again, make sure you follow all the manufacturer's instructions depending on what parts you use. Next, we'll want to take our three-prong power cord and insert it in the grommet hole. And again, this is from that kit that we purchased. All right. Now again, if you're just hardwiring this dishwasher into your uh, existing electrical system, if you just have a wire coming out of the wall, you don't need to do this step. You would connect uh, these wires on the dishwasher directly to the wires coming out uh, of your house. But since this is hooked up through a power outlet and we need the cord, we need this kit and we need this cord to be able to make these connections here in this junction box. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. But again, just making sure that we're clear here that not everyone is gonna need this cord. It just depends on your situation. Okay, so we just need to pull these ends off. Basically, this is some extra electrical uh, wire insulation that's not needed. We need to twist the wires together. On each of the colors. And then we need to hook up each, uh, basically each color to each color. It's pretty straightforward. So green to green, black to black, white to white. So what you'll want to do now is you'll want to take the wires and you'll want to put them next to each other and then you'll want to twist them together. And then you'll want to take a wire nut 
and put that over the top as well. Twist that on until it's nice and tight. So you really can't twist it anymore and you can see it's starting to twist the wires a little bit more. So that's on there. I just need to do that for the other two now. Okay. You might want to pull on the wire nuts a little bit just to make sure they won't come off. Maybe pull on the wires a little bit too if you're not sure if you've got a good connection. These are tight. They're not going anywhere. Now the only thing we need to do to finish up our electrical is to install the junction box cover that came with the dishwasher. Thank you. Mysterious hand. And this goes here. With this plug. You want to make sure all the wires are fed in and aren't binding in any way. So a little lip that this holds on to on one side. And then on the other side, we use a screw to secure it. Now I'm using a drill, but you want to be careful if you're going to do this because this can strip really easy. I recommend using a screwdriver for this step, but I don't have one handy, so I'm going to do this. Okay. Alright, now our electrical work is done. So now that the electrical work is done, all we have to do is hook up the drain hose and uh, we can start sliding this dishwasher in place. All right, so now that we've got the dishwasher setting back upright, we just need to untape this hose that's on the, I don't know, the right side of the dishwasher, I suppose. Make sure we don't snag anything. And we also want to make sure not to undo this um, hose from this part right here. So they've got kind of a loop. In the dishwasher here, they've got this huge warning sticker that says don't mess with this, otherwise it's not going to drain properly. So we're not going to mess with it. So we're going to leave that alone, and uh, we're just going to get the hose set up to where we can um, connect the extension to it and feed it through inside the cabinet. I'm um, just taking this tape apart here. And uh, once we do that, then we can start connecting everything underneath the counter. Okay, so now we need to make sure this clamp is on this hose extension. And again, yours might be a little bit different than this but definitely need to make sure the clamp is pulled back on here before we insert the hose that comes off of the dishwasher. So we'll push this on, to move it back and forth. Make sure it forms a nice tight connection here. Basically push it as far as it'll go. And you can see that here, the hose pushed out this rubber piece so we know that it's inserted. So then what we do is we'll take this clamp, squeeze it again, we'll move it over this rubber part. There we go. Okay, gotta make sure that that is on between these two ridges here um, and that the hose is all the way inserted. Otherwise you could have a leak. Okay, now that we've got the dishwasher close to the cavity where it's going to be installed, we're going to go ahead and route our hoses and our wire back through uh, where it's supposed to go. So, trying to get as much of this underneath the sink or in the sink area as possible to make it easier to put the dishwasher in place. We're going to feed our water line and our power cord through the same hole. Now, since the hole that we have here is a little bit tighter, uh, we're going to feed the power cord through first to get this plug all the way inserted, and then we'll run our water line in. So we're going to hand tighten this on first and then we're going to take a wrench and we'll make sure it's tight so we don't forget. 
All right, next we're gonna hook up the drain. You can see here, uh, we've got a couple different ports. Um, and you might be wondering which one is the right one. So in our case, the old dishwasher was hooked up to this drain, this drain pipe here, so this is open. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up the dishwasher to this drain so we can get everything working and finished tonight. The uh, other option you have is if you have a dishwasher, or not if you have a dishwasher, if you have a, the other option is if you have a garbage disposal, then you typically have a port on the garbage disposal where you're supposed to hook in your dishwasher. Now, this garbage disposal has this port. However, this garbage disposal has never been used in that way before, so we're not hooking it up to this. But if, you, if your old dishwasher that you're replacing um, had this as an option, then you're gonna wanna hook it back up to whatever uh, port it was that you removed it from, unless you're gonna make some changes and you know how to do that. Okay, so just wanna clarify, we've got a port here and we've got a port here, but we're using this one because that's the one that's set up to be used right now. Okay, so here's the drain hose. We're not gonna make any modifications to this, but this end can be cut off if we're gonna just be using this part here to connect into this uh, tailpiece on this drain. But since eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this into this garbage disposal, we're gonna want this larger connection here, so we're just gonna leave this on. And uh, in order to tighten this down here, we're gonna put this hose clamp on. I'm gonna slide this on this drain first. Then we're going to slip this on here. Make sure it goes on as far as it can. And then we're going to tighten this down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Can't get that off. Okay, so that's connected. doesn't pick up here. Get this in place. Now this specific dishwasher has a lot of insulation, so yours might not have all this, but we've got to work with this here, and then we're going to have to put some more on it, um, which is what it calls for in the instructions. So we'll do that here in just a second. All right, so on this specific dishwasher, it includes some other trim pieces, and this helps keep the uh, noise down, noise levels of the dishwasher down. So I'm gonna install those now, per the instructions. So this is kind of a pain. Not like it's not, it's something we have to do every time. Yeah. And if you look here, if you have this model dishwasher, it looks like this is cut out right here. If you look at this part, it looks like this is cut out right here to allow for the door because there's nothing for it to attach to at the bottom of the door. So this side is on this piece is towards the back and this side is on the bottom where this little flap is gone. Now we're gonna slide this in place. We need to make sure that the hoses and the electrical cord is not bound in any way on the back side. So you kind of have to just make sure, uh, the biggest part I think is the drain hose to make sure it's not in the way. So just move that back as best as you can. So when you slide this in, it won't get, it won't get kinked. Now, the other thing, now the other thing you should keep in mind is with this specific dishwasher, since it does have sound insulation, um, we're going to have to move this back and then we're going to also have to fold these rubber pieces in place, like back in place. This might be a little bit fun trying to get all this to work together, but we'll see how it goes. Now before you slide this dishwasher in place, you need to make sure you install the uh, angle brackets. In this case, we need to install the ones, these uh, mounting brackets on the top so it can screw underneath this countertop. Um, unfortunately, the way the instructions are laid out, I didn't see where it said to do this before we put the dishwasher in place. So we're gonna have to um, get a little bit creative to get this installed here. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, get this in place here. Um, since we don't have a lot of room to be able to um, actually um, you know, get a screwdriver towards the back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this angled um, this angled attachment on this drill to be able to get the screws in. So if you don't have the dishwasher in place, 
Um, that's great. Go ahead and put these mounting brackets where you need them first before you get the dishwasher in the cavity. I think that's right. That's my only other thought. Make sure to level the dishwasher too, where it's close to where it's gonna be in place. Um, get it as level as you can before pushing it in. Basically, all you have to do is adjust these feet on the dishwasher, there's two on each side, and then you unscrew it uh, to make it go down farther, and you can you know, screw it in, obviously, to, to make it go uh, in and, and kind of change the angle. So uh, once you do that, you'll need to put a level on in the inside of the dishwasher, make sure it's all nice and level, and then put it in place in the cavity. Also, uh, you need to make sure that uh, the top of the dishwasher when you do level it is not too high or too low. Um, these brackets that you have installed on the dishwasher that go to the to the uh, countertop to, to attach to the countertop, they should be able to uh, touch the countertop but not be obviously too, uh, too tight and not too far away either. So you're gonna probably have to play with this depending on your needs. Next, we need to screw the brackets into the wood underneath the cabinet. Again, we're just reusing the same points that we had for the old dishwasher. Now, we're going to turn on this quarter turn valve and we need to check a couple things. One, we need to make sure it's not leaking here, right? So make sure if there's any water here that this is dry so that way you can tell if there's any leaks. Also. Underneath, we need to make sure where that 90 degree angle is and it's screwed into the dishwasher, that there are no leaks there. So I'm gonna turn this on. This is fairly dry. I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna check it. Looks good there. All right, and then that looks good as well. I'm not seeing any drips. So we're gonna keep an eye on this while we do the rest of the steps and uh, make sure it's completely dry before we put the toe kick plate back on. But as long as this stays dry, then we should be good. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is plug it in. Now that the water's turned on and the drain's hooked up, we'll go ahead and take off this protective cap and plug it in. And it might beep, I'm not sure. It did. All right, now we can go to the dishwasher and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. All right, so everything is plugged in and hooked up. Now, fair disclosure on this, we tried and tried and tried to get this dishwasher put inside this cavity with these rubber strips in place, and uh, we just couldn't do it. So in order to be able to fit this in, we had to leave these off. Now, hopefully this isn't gonna cause any problems for us. We're gonna you know, run, some, run a test um, load through this dishwasher to make sure there aren't any leaks. I don't think there should be because I think this is just soundproofing material. So we're going to make sure though. Um, but if uh, I think the problem is, is our opening here, the space frame is just too tight in order to get these uh, rubber strips in. It just makes it too wide. And so um, we had to not include these in order to get the dishwasher in. It's going to make it a little bit louder. That's not a huge deal for us. Um, we bought the dishwasher for its features mainly, and then the soundproofing was a nice addition, but uh, just wanted you to be aware that we failed at this. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the kick plate in place. Uh, there are no leaks here, so I think we're good there since we're at full pressure and it's, we've been that way for a little while now. Um, we also had another issue where we ran out of clearance between the dishwasher and the countertop. It needed to go, the, the dishwasher needs, needed to be raised up a little bit higher. So what we did was we used some of these uh, composite shims underneath the feet to get the dishwasher to raise up just a little bit more in the front and make it level. Okay, so the last step with this dishwasher is it includes some more soundproofing material, which is right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shove this in place down here. So we're gonna put this 
soundproofing material in here. It's supposed to fit underneath this part here. Just shove it in a little bit harder just because we've got these shims in place. And put this in here. This is just gonna give us a little bit more uh, soundproofing from the motor. So get this in here. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the toe kick or the kick plate and we're gonna put this on the front here. And let's see, get that all lined up where it's supposed to be. Okay, and that is installed. Now, let's uh, make sure it works here. It turns on. Two, three. Now let's go ahead and we'll take off this protective film here. Let's take this energy guide off. And uh, if you're interested in seeing the features of this dishwasher and how it works and what these things are for, um, that's going to be in a different video. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and turn this on and uh, make sure this runs. So it says that it's on normal, upper and lower wash zones, it's normal. And I think all we have to do is close this and it should start. All right, so that's pretty much all you have to do to install or actually replace a dishwasher in a kitchen. Uh, if you have any questions about the process that we went through, hopefully we covered everything, but if we missed something, please leave us a comment and we will get back to those comments as soon as we can. Also, if you're curious about this specific dishwasher or any of the tools that we use to install it, we'll have links in the description where you can go and check those things out. Okay, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe to Top Homeowner if you haven't already. And remember, at Top Homeowner, our goal is to help you become the top homeowner in your neighborhood. We'll see you in the next video.